All right, uh, welcome back. This is a, a fairly short video, mostly just introducing uh, raster math or map algebra with the map calculator. There'll be a, another practicum to do the actual procedures that we're going to do for the f culmination of Project 3, which is to create the predictive model, but I thought it'd be useful just to make a short video just about the raster calculator so that you can refer back to it because you'll be using the raster calculator a lot um, as you complete Project 3. So um, from last time, I'm still in this Trace 21K uh, map set. So I am just going to make a, a new map set. I'm in the data tab over here. And uh, let's see, where is the, there it is. Create a new map set in the current location. And uh, nothing that we do in this practicum is going to be uh, something you want to keep around. It's just going to be example. So I'm going to call this map set test, which means I will remember that it's not important and I could delete it later on if I wanted to with no consequence. So we click OK and current map set is test. There we are. So uh, I happen to still have the DEM loaded up, but it doesn't matter. You don't need to have anything loaded at this moment. Uh, the raster map calculator is under the raster menu and it says raster map calculator and there are two versions I will load them both up there's the one that says uh, simplified and then there's the regular one uh, our map calc and the simple one is our map calc simple now this is technically simpler looking as an interface but I actually think it's a more complex uh, interface to use and I'll talk exactly about why I think that in a minute uh, you see the regular map calculator actually looks like a calculator. There's buttons to push. There's a place where the formula shows up as you create it by pushing the buttons. And it actually looks a lot like the SQL builder that we use to uh, build the complex X SQL statement to extract our sample of sites a few practicums back. This one looks like a regular grass interface. You type the whole formula here and you would use the input uh, areas to parameterize it. The one benefit of this is you put the maps in these variables A, B, C, D, E, F, and then you can write a formula just using the letters A, B, C, D, E, F instead of having to type out the full map names. That could be simpler if you like that, but I think this is just as simple and I'll show you exactly how you build a formula in here and you'll see that it's actually pretty easy to do it. You don't have to actually do much typing at all. You just do a lot of pulling of map names from these automated pull downs. So I'm not going to show you anything about Map Calc Simple. Uh, if you want to use it, you can explore it on your own. I still think the regular map calculator is the way to go, and uh, that's what I'm going to show you today. Now, because this is not a standard grass module, it doesn't have all the tabs and everything, if you want to pull up the manual, you have to go to the regular or the, the main interface, go to help. Grass help G manual and uh, it will run it and it will actually pop up in your web browser which I happen to have off on my other screen so I'm going to pull uh, the tab over here there it is and this is the manual over here and there's a lot of stuff here but if you want to get to the help files for any particular module um, you would go down to these ones for raster 3d vector database etc uh, the raster map calculator is here under raster processing raster commands manual and here are all the possible raster commands. And you just gotta scroll down till you get to the r.m, which is right here, r map cap. And here's the help file. Now, this is a pretty serious help file. There's a lot of information in this one. And uh, when I was learning this way back when, I spent a lot of time just reading, highlighting, trying to remember how map calc works. You could do some very complex mathematical formulas in map calc. And you could do some simple stuff too. There are two important sections to this help file that you're going to want to look at carefully on your own time and try to remember. The first one is this idea of operators and order of precedence. Okay, So these are all the mathematical operations that you can put into the map calculator. And if I bring the map calculator up here, and I'm just going to lock it to the top so that we can look at the help file. and keep this uh, visible. I'll put it over here under my picture. Okay, So you can see a lot of those symbols are actually here in the calculate the calculator button part two, right? All, most all of those symbols are there. 
and it tells you what they are. You know, the simple ones are addition, subtraction, division, multiplication. But then you have all of these Boolean operators, which are greater than, greater than, equal to, less than, less than, equal to, equals, not equals, modulus, uh, exponentiation, right, to, to raise to the power of, and a whole bunch of uh, conditionals, and, or, etc. And you have to read, like, look, there's one with two ampersands, one with one ampersand, one with three ampersands, and they make a difference specifically. But what I will say is that the ones that you use the most are just the doubles, right? That double ampersand and the double or. Those are the normal ones. These other ones are a little bit more special case, but you might want to use them at some point, right? So most of these other ones we won't use too much, but the nots, the not equal to, the ands, the ors, sometimes the modulus, the exponentiation, those are ones that we will probably use, you know, on occasion when we want to do some more complex uh, formula, okay? So pay attention to this little section here in the help file. And uh, also the order of operations is important. Um, you can read a little bit about that. And we'll talk about this when we build some formulas later. But you use parentheses, right, to nest things that need to happen first. So anything in the lowest level of parentheses happens first. And then the next level and the next level as you go out, you will start in the inside and then it will do sequentially the parts of the formula that are in the next set of parentheses. And finally, if there's no parentheses, that's the last thing to do. So, for example, if you want multiplication to happen before addition, you have to put it in some parentheses and then add something outside of it. You know, simple, regular things that we would do in regular algebra, if you think way back to when you might have taken algebra last, okay? And then, if you scroll all the way down, the next section that's really important to read are these functions. Now, these are not necessarily here in the calculator, but they're here in the what's called operands, or insert function. There's a pull down. So all of those functions that you see in the help file are here, and you can see that there is a lot of them. So this is where you can get really fancy. These are basic operators with symbols, and these are functions that MapCalc will do. Now, you can see that there's a whole bunch of trigonometric functions, including, you know, the arc cosine and <laughs> arctangent, etc. Uh, you can do things like find the highest value or find the smallest value. You can uh, convert from integer to floating point. You can create nested expressions where you evaluate them in sequence. Um, you can uh, make these graphing functions, which are uh, sets of linear regressions with inflection points. We're mostly going to focus on the if statements, and you can see a bunch of them, and we'll talk about how we do this when we do the predictive model particularly. That's when we're going to build a lot of if statements. These are Boolean statements, and they use these logical operators to create tests, and then you do one thing if the test turns out true, and another thing if it turns out false, and you can nest these multiple times if you want to get very, very complex. But then you have a bunch of statistical functions as well, finding the median of a stack of maps, or the minimum, or the modulus, or the mode, or the max, etc. right? Now you can use our series to do a bunch of this stuff, and I'll show you that as well. Um, but it may be useful to do this in the map calculator but also as a series of operations, you want to find the median of a stack of max maps first and then use that to multiply against something else. Um, also, you can do moving window analysis in the map calculator. Yeah, you can build a custom moving window. It's a little bit complex to do, but you can certainly do it. And you can get variables like the resolution, the current resolution, um, etc., the current area of a cell in square meters. And you can use those in your expressions so you can build some very complex localized kind of uh, equations to do some uh, interesting manipulations to your maps okay so there's a lot more in there also null is something that you're going to want to look at now remember null is not zero null is no data and uh, the map calculator has to handle null values in a special way and you may want to use that to your advantage uh, to cut out an area, you know, anything greater than five 
make null or something like that. But you have to know what you're doing when you when you deal with this. And you have a couple of um, special operators. I think if I could find it in here, there's one that is null right here, which tests if something is null. And uh, also, if you want to make something null, you have to write it in a specific uh, specific way, null -L with the parentheses, right? So take some time to read over that. You know, paying particularly close attention to the sections of the functions and the operators. So let's do something real simple. Okay, so let us pull in an existing map, and uh, we'll just pull in our SRTM. This is the map that you see behind me, and I will uh, just create a new map which is 10 meters lower in elevation. Why would you want to do this? Well, maybe you have systematic error. Maybe you're trying to make an estimate of what the bedrock level might be, 10 meters below the Earth's surface. Uh, you know, in this particular case, we're just doing it for fun. So you can either type on your keyboard the minus sign, or you can go and click the minus sign here, and then you can type in 10. And uh, what you'll want to do, you notice I pulled in the existing map here, and it pulled in the name of the map for me. I didn't have to type it, which is great. And then you have to put the name of a new map, so I'm just going to call this bedrock. It doesn't matter. I'm going to delete this anyway, right? So all we have to do now that we have the name of the map and we have our formula is to hit run. And uh, it may not look like anything happened, but it did. We have a new map <laughs> called bedrock, and it is literally 10 meters lower than the other DEM. Otherwise, the pattern of colors is going to look exactly the same, right? So that's a real simple thing. Let's do something uh, a little different. I'll delete that. I'll delete the name over here. Let's pull in uh, some, let me actually change my map set search path so that I can uh, get some of my other map sets open here. Um, so we go to grass working environment, map set access, and let's just turn on all our other map sets so that I have a bunch of maps I can use. So let's take our uh, slope map, like so, slope terrain analysis. And I'll load that in over here uh, just so we can, uh, we can look at it as well. You don't have to do this, but since I'm showing you how, I will do it. So you can just remember, OK. So there's our slope map over here. And uh, let's go ahead and load in the, the raster legend so that we can see the range of values. Okay, 72 maximum slope and uh, zero minimum slope. And we have some breakpoints. So let's classify this at, in terms of uh, high, medium, and low slope. Okay, so we have our slope terrain analysis. Let me just delete this completely. Let's start with an if statement. So I'll pull in my if statement here. And it just gives me the if in parentheses. Now you can type that in if you'd like as well. Now, if, and then we'll pull our slope map. If slope, and we'll use our less than equal to 10 degrees. And I put a comma. The comma means. That's our statement we're evaluating. Now we're going to tell it what to do if it's true and if it's false. So if it's true, less than equal to 10, we're going to put the value to 1. Okay. Then we'll put a comma and we'll tell, tell it what to do if it was false. Now if all we wanted to do is to separate out the low uh, slope areas, 1 and 0 would be fine. But we're going to nest another if statement here. So I'm just going to put a space and I'm going to I'll pull another if. Uh, into it. I may have to just type it because grass will maybe not load it for you. So I'll put another if and then I'll put another two parentheses. Now I want to make sure you see that there are now two parentheses at the very end here. It's important that you don't forget to close your parentheses with the proper number of them. So now we have two nested, if, or we have one major if and one nested if. So now we're going to write uh, again, we're going to pull in our slope map. Uh, from here. So now if slope is 
again, we've said less than or equal to 10, 1. Otherwise, now we're only dealing with the values that are actually great, 11 or greater. So we can just put another less than or equal to, and we can make the cutoff uh, 30, let's say. 30, and put a comma, 2. So that's the second value, middle slope. We'll put another comma for the if that's false. And now we can put in our last nested if statement. And again, now I have three parentheses at the end here. And I will pull in my slope map again because we're still testing on that one. Uh, terrain analysis slope. And here I will put, actually, you know what? At this particular statement, we didn't need to do another if statement. We can just put three because it will capture everything that's left. So let's read this from the beginning. If slope less than or equal to 10, make it 1. Otherwise, if slope less than or equal to 30, make it 2. Otherwise, make it 3, anything larger. And so here we'll put slope classes as the name of the output map. And our whole expression, if we want to see it, is written down here. This is the all the, the expression that it's assembled from everything that we've done. And we hit run. And wait for it to load in. And if I, I'm going to put the map calculator off to the side so we can see our map. And uh, if I pick my uh, slope classes map for the legend, we'll see that we just have three. One, two, three. Right? Three being the highest slopes, two being the middle uh, values of slope, and one being the low values of slope. Now this is basic classification, numerical classification using cutoff values. And that's important because that's kind of what we're going to do uh, for all of our input values when we're doing our predictive model. Um, you can do all kinds of other stuff with the map calculator. So I'll leave it to you to explore some of these other functions, whether or not you want to do trigonometric functions, basic algebraic functions, or statistical functions, you know, finding the mean or the whatever value. You can do that if you wanted to. Um, but I think this video has gone on long enough, and you've basically got the introduction to the map calculator that you need to be able to use it. So I'm going to cut it off uh, at this particular point.